In this video, I decided it might be useful to give you some definitions for all of the key terms in inheritance. Now, I'm not going to be able to write all these down because I would need absolutely loads of space and it would take me forever. So I'm going to discuss these with you. But what I'm going to suggest you guys do is as you watch this video, grab a pen and a piece of paper, write down my definitions. You can obviously pause the video because you'll probably need more time. And just make sure that you are learning the correct definitions because you could be asked for these definitions in an exam. Okay, so the first one we've got, what is a gene? You learned this one at GCSE, but at A-level, we should be saying that a gene is a section of DNA with a particular sequence of bases that codes for a polypeptide. Remember, it's the sequence of bases in the gene that determines the order or the primary structure of the polypeptide. Now, on the AQA specification for gene, it also adds that a gene has a specific locus. So if you see in your exam that the definition is worth two marks, maybe that's what they want you to say. It has a specific locus or a specific position on the chromosome. Allele, easy really no different from GCSE, an allele is just a different version or a different form of the same gene. And that makes me think about homologous chromosomes, which isn't on my list today. But remember, homologous chromosomes carry the same genes in the same loci, but they might have different alleles, different versions of those genes. Locus is another easy one. That's just the position of the gene on the chromosome. So each gene has a specific locus. And as I've just said, if you've got a homologous pair of chromosomes, they will carry the same genes and they will be in the same loci. They will have the same locus. Dominant, interesting one. I might just change your GCSE definition a little bit. In fact, no, dominant's fine. I think recessive we might need to adapt a little bit. The dominant allele, what we can say here is the dominant allele is always expressed. Now you can extend that further if you want to. You might say things like, you only need one copy of a dominant allele in the genotype for it to be expressed in the phenotype. But you can just say, this allele will always be expressed. If you have it in your genotype, it will be expressed in your phenotype. Recessive, I used to say, recessive alleles, you need two copies for them to be expressed. That kind of falls apart a little bit at A-level because when you start to look at sex-linked genes, you can have a recessive sex-linked recessive allele and a male would only need one copy of it. So we're not gonna say that for A-level. For recessive, instead, we're gonna say a recessive allele will only be expressed if there is no dominant allele, okay? A recessive allele will only be expressed if there is no dominant allele. That definition is perfect because it even works with sex-linked genes. Codominant, easy. Both alleles are expressed. That's it. They're both codominant. Both alleles are going to be expressed at the same time, which means you might get an intermediate phenotype. So in like flower, colour, uh, if red and white are co-dominant and the offspring inherits both the red and the white, they're both expressed. So the flower might be pink. They're both expressed. It's that easy. Heterozygous, super easy GCSE definition. That just means you have two different alleles for a gene. It might be a dominant and a recessive. Two different alleles for the same gene. Whereas homozygous just means you have two of the same alleles. Two recessive alleles, two dominant alleles, they're just two of the same alleles. Right, we're on to some A-level specific ones now, guys. Epistasis is something you will learn about and you'll see it come up in exam questions. Epistasis is where the expression of one gene can mask or modify the expression of another gene. So you've got one gene at one particular locus that can affect the expression of a different gene that's at a different locus. So you'll see that one come up. Make sure you look out for it in questions. You might be asked, what is this called? And the answer is epistasis. 
You might be asked, what is epistasis? In which case, give my definition. Sex linkage. Now, sex linkage, strictly speaking, is a gene that is carried on a sex chromosome. So it's a gene that's found on like the X or the Y chromosome. But in reality, because the Y chromosome is so small and it has far fewer genes than the X chromosome, what we can say for our definition is that sex linkage is just a gene that is carried on the X chromosome. So obviously, human females, we have two X chromosomes. So if a gene is sex linked or carried on the X chromosome, we would have two copies of that gene, maybe a dominant and a recessive or two recessives or two dominants. If we're a human male, we have XY chromosomes. So if a sex linked gene is carried on the X chromosome, they would only have one copy of that sex linked gene. So there's no possibility of them being heterozygous or being carriers because they're only going to have one dominant or one recessive. Autosomal linkage. This is basically just genes that are on the same autosome. Now, an autosome is just a chromosome that is not a sex chromosome. So the 23rd pair of chromosomes are the sex chromosomes, right? The other 22 pairs are just other chromosomes. So an autosome is any of those other 22 pairs. And if we have autosomal linkage, the two genes are on the same chromosome. So they are very likely to be inherited together, unless maybe crossing over separates them. But especially if they're very close together on the same chromosome, they will almost certainly be inherited together. They are linked, they are found on the same chromosome or autosome, because it's not a sex chromosome. Finally, multiple alleles. I thought I'd mention this one because it does confuse some students. When we say multiple alleles, we just mean that for a gene, there are multiple alleles. As in, there's not just two alleles, there's three alleles of that gene, there's four alleles of that gene, there's multiple versions of that gene. But remember, this is where I've seen students kind of fall apart. You can only inherit two alleles. So even if there's four different alleles in the population, you will only inherit two of them. OK, because your chromosomes are in pairs. You can't have all four. It's like blood groups, isn't it? There's the A, there's the B, there's the O allele. But you will inherit two. There's just multiple alleles in the population for that particular gene. And that's it. Have I missed any out? Let me know in the comments if that's helped. Please go back and pause the video for each definition. I've tried to word it exactly like it will be on a mark scheme. So if you learn these definitions, you will be all set. Let me know if there's any other definitions you want me to go through with you.